Hello, my miraculous friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden, and I'm so grateful to get to spend this time with you and to share one of my favorite books. This book literally changed my life, and I will share the story with you in a few moments. But first, let's get ourselves ready by doing what I love to do. Just take a few deep breaths to get ourselves grounded and centered. Breathing in the energy of expansion, breathing out what you no longer need. And if you are driving, please keep your eyes on the road, but you can still bring your awareness to your breath. And as we allow our breath to regulate, starts to expand our awareness, just tuning into what is it that you would love to experience today as you listen and knowing that that's exactly what you'll be experiencing, let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude for this opportunity to be here together. And we can begin. All right. Well, thank you and welcome once again. I'm holding this book in my hands. You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. This book is amazing. And I. I'm not kidding when I say that it it changed my life, and I'll tell you the story about it in, in just a little bit, but I've been shocked to find out when I mention this to my clients, I say, oh, well, you know, do you have the book, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay? They say, who? And I say, you don't know who Louise Hay is? Well, you might feel that way as well. You might not know who she is, but in fact, you probably do know who she is through some of her work. You just may, may not have been familiar with her. Louise Hay is the author of this book, and then she founded the publishing company called Hay House. Hay House is one of the biggest publishing companies in the world for um, new thought, new age, self-help publishers and authors. So Wayne Dyer was a big author there. Carolyn Mace has had her books published there. Um, Trying to think of who else. Doreen Virtue used to have her books there back when she was a Hay House author. A lot of the big names, if you look at anybody, chances are they've had at least one book or people want to have at least one book published through Hay House because it's really the publishing house, or at least it used to be the publishing house that everybody wanted to be. Louise has since passed. She passed when she was, I believe, 90, going just about 91. And she started her company and she published this book um, in her late 40s, early 50s. And so it's one of the reasons she's one of my heroes is that she didn't really kind of get going with her life purpose until a little bit later on. Um, and her story is pretty incredible. She was diagnosed with cancer. I think it was either cervical cancer or uterine cancer. And she had just begun studying the science of mind and the principles that your thoughts and your feelings can create your reality. And she was studying those laws and got this diagnosis. And she said, okay, well, it's time for me to prove this to myself. The doctors gave her six months to live. And she said, you give me six months and I will be back here in six months. And if in that time I have not been healed from this disease, then I'll let you do the surgery. So she said no to the, the treatment. And she went down this road and she recognized that so many things that had happened to her in her life there were unresolved feelings and unresolved thoughts and beliefs that she was still carrying around. So she endured a lot of abuse when she was younger. I think she was sexually abused when she was very, very young. And then I think she also experienced sexual abuse later on as she was um, either uh, around 10 or so or in her early teens. And she says that the the pain and the shame and the fear and the anger, a lot of, you can imagine the feelings that were never really fully expressed. She just pretended that everything was fine and she never told anybody about it. Well, she feels like that's why that particular part of her body, if she was going to have cancer, why would it manifest there? Because that's where she felt like the trauma still was and she still had some negative beliefs around that. So she went through a process of working with her mind, working with her thoughts, working with her feelings. But I always want to say to people, if you get this book, make sure you read the end of the book. And I actually recommend that you start with the end of the book, which is part four, which is her story. 
Now I'm looking at, this is the 10th anniversary edition. They probably have more editions since then. Um, but it, in this book, it's chapter 16, my story. And she goes into detail about her story. The, if you start with the last chapter of this book, it'll really inspire you to go through the exercises and to go through your own healing process because she shares what it was like for her. And she talks about how she needed to forgive her parents and she needed to forgive herself and everything that she went through. But she also, she didn't just focus only on her mind. She changed her diet. She started exercising. And basically what it all boils down to is not the things that she did, but how she did it. She did it because she switched from not loving herself and not accepting herself to loving and accepting herself. So I don't want you to get the idea that you have to follow what she did and you know, drink certain kinds of juices or something like that. Because I, I don't think that that's the answer necessarily. I do think it's more of what, how you're doing it more than what you're doing, not that what you're doing doesn't matter. So start with that chapter. Start with the chapter 16 where she talks about it and uh, she goes on to tell her story and how she was able to heal her life. And for her, it started with her body. Now this book, you can go through it and do the exercises and you will definitely start to see some miracles happening for you. I came, this book was published, I think in 1984. And I think I came across it in 1986 because that's when I had my own health crisis. And I had gone to a healer who the doctors weren't able to figure out what was going on with me at all. I had this pain on my right side and they kept saying it was my imagination. And then they said it was a urinary tract infection and it kept coming back and nobody could really figure it out. So my sister had taken me to see my very first healer and all she did was take a little saliva sample, go in the back room. I didn't tell her anything. She came back, she went right to that area on my body I said, oh, this is where you're having the problem. Your gallbladder is only functioning at about 20%. Now, how did she know that? I have no idea how she knew that. I still, to this day, don't know how she did that. She somehow took an energetic reading of my body. But she also said to me, she looked in my eyes and she said, but if you don't, he if you don't forgive whoever it is that you're so angry with, this is never going to fully heal for you. And then she left the room to get a bunch of herbs. And I was like, whoa. What do you mean by that? Like, how did she even know? And that started my healing journey of, I wanted to know how she did that, but even more so, I wanted to understand how unresolved emotion in the body, how did that work? And how could you heal that? And what was that like? So that was when I was like 19 or 20 or 21, somewhere in there. And even though I was in college, I started reading everything I could. And one of the first things I read was Louise Hay's book. And Louise Hay has this powerful book called You Can Heal Your Life. And in the back of the book, she has, she calls it the list. And the list has um, physical symptoms, physical problems, what she calls the probable cause, and then a new thought pattern. So since I'm using myself as an example, let me go to this list. I used to go to this list religiously <laughs> when I had stuff going on. But I'm going to go to it now, and I'm going to read on uh, what it says for gallbladder since that was uh, my issue. So I'm on page 172, just in case you have this copy. And so it says for gallstones, the probable cause would be bitterness, hard thoughts, and uh, condemning, condemning others. And I can tell you at the time when I was 19, I had a lot of bitterness because I had um, a brother of mine who was 20 years older than me, and was the source of a lot of problems in our family, or that's what I believed. And so I felt really bitter about the fact that much of my childhood was colored by this other person and their problems. And um, I, I had a lot of forgiveness work that I needed to do. And for me, this has been an ongoing process of had to forgive my, my brother, then I had to forgive my mom. And ultimately, I had to really forgive myself. And I really think that all forgiveness really has to do with the energy of forgiving yourself. So this is what you would do. You would look up your, your problem. You would read what the uh, probable cause is. And then there's an affirmation. And this affirmation is, there is joyous release of the past. Life is sweet and so am I. And so this is about, about letting go. And so I used that um, 
that affirmation for a while. And then when I had different issues going on, I would take a look and see. Now, one of the things that I differ in with Louise is that she calls this the probable cause. And I think that she really believed 100% that all of our physical problems stem from our mind, from our thoughts. Um, I have found in my own healing practice that that's true about 80% of the time. We have unresolved emotion, and then we also have what our beliefs are. And a lot of times our beliefs are handed down from our family. It's just what we grow up with. But when we have something happen in our lives, if we don't give ourselves permission to grieve, to cry, to be angry, if we keep those feelings in, they kind of get stuck. And this is in the work that I do with people's energy fields. This is especially true if you're a highly sensitive person like me. Things get their unresolved energy and they take energy uh, to keep them going in your energy field. And so being able to release this, to forgive yourself is really, really crucial. A lot of it has to do with going back to childhood and releasing any negative feelings you have towards your father, towards your mother, towards your siblings, towards your teacher that you had in the second grade, whatever it might be. But mostly for it's really about forgiving yourself. And I think this is the key thing for highly sensitive people and for light workers is, you know, we're so compassionate and we feel so deeply, but we have to do the inner work of forgiving and releasing uh, anything that we may hold against ourselves. So on page eight of this book, um, Louise says, all dis-ease comes from a state of unforgiveness. Now, again, I, I don't ever use the word all. I, say, I would say many diseases come from a state of unforgiveness, and unforgiveness is never going to help you to be healthy. Um, I don't say all because I do think that there's karma that, that happens with people. And I also think that there are other factors. Like if you were raised next to a, a nuclear power plant, you might have some issues because you were raised next to a nuclear power plant and that might have impacted you. So I don't think all of it comes from, from your mind. Um, but I do think that unforgiveness really can contribute to how you feel and how your body is doing. So part of what she shares in here is this beautiful statement. I forgive you for not being the way I wanted you to be. I forgive you and I set you free. Now you can use that for just about anyone or anything because really that's what it boils down to is we're forgiving them because they're not the way that we wanted them to be. Even if they were doing terrible things to you. If you were abused or whatever it might be, there's the actual trauma, but then there's also the story that we tell ourselves about the trauma of that they didn't love us or you know whatever it might be. And so this is very powerful. I forgive you for not being the way I wanted you to be. I forgive you and I set you free. And I would add to that, I forgive myself for not being the way I want myself to be. I forgive myself and I, for, and I set myself free. So on page nine, she talks about self-approval and self-acceptance are the main keys to positive changes in every area of your life. Self-approval and self-acceptance. She says, loving the self to me begins with never ever criticizing ourselves for anything. I remember in our last episode, we talked about that. We talked about self-criticism and how unhelpful it can be. And I gave you a spiritual shift. And if you haven't listened to that episode yet, go back and listen to that previous episode and you'll get, you'll get that spiritual shift as well. Louise says here, criticism locks us into the very pattern we are trying to change. Understanding and being gentle with ourselves helps us to move out of it. Remember. You've been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. I love that. You've been criticizing yourself for years and that hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. So I'm going to give you this little um, affirmation that she has here about, about this very topic of loving and approving of yourself. In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, and complete. I believe in a power far greater than I am 
that flows through me every moment of every day. I open myself to the wisdom within, knowing that there is only one intelligence in this universe. Out of this one intelligence comes all the answers, all the solutions, all the healings, and all the new creations. I trust this power and intelligence, knowing that whatever I need to know is revealed to me, and that whatever I need comes to me in the right time, space, and sequence. All is well in my world. And that's at the bottom of page nine. That is a beautiful, beautiful um, affirmation. At the very, very end of this book. So th there's the first part of the book. There is the third part that has the list of all the different symptoms. And then we have her story, which I highly recommend. And at the very end of the book, looking to see if there's a page here, 227, 28. I guess this would be two, page 229. There's no page number on here. I'm going to read this to you. The very end of the book, she has uh, resources for you, which honestly, I think at this point, these resources might be a little bit out of date, but some of them might still be good. Um, but I'm going to read this final, longer affirmation. And I encourage you on page 229, you could, if you get this book, you can photocopy this or you can copy and paste or whatever you do. And I highly recommend that you read this every day because if you can saturate your mind with these positive thoughts, especially now with so much that's going on in the world, it'll really make a big difference for you. I recommend if you can record it and put it on uh, your phone or any place where you can listen to it over and over again, it's gonna really help you because again, it'll just see, go right into your subconscious mind. So this is the beautiful, beautiful, at long affirmation that I find to be one of the most helpful in the book. Deep at the center of my being, there is an infinite well of love. I now allow this love to flow to the surface. It fills my heart, my body, my mind, my consciousness, my very being. And, radiate, and radiates out from me in all directions and returns to me multiplied. The more love I use and give, the more I have to give. The supply is endless. The use of love makes me feel good. It is, it is an expression of my inner joy. I love myself. Therefore, I take loving care of my body. I lovingly feed it nourishing foods and beverages. I lovingly groom it and dress it, and my body lovingly responds to me with vibrant health and energy. I love myself. Therefore, I provide for myself a comfortable home, one that fills all my needs and is a pleasure to be in. I fill the rooms with the vibration of love so that all who enter, myself included, will feel this love and will be nourished by it. I love myself. Therefore, I work at something I truly enjoy doing, something that uses my creative talents and abilities, working with and for people that I love and that love me and earning a really good income. I love myself. Therefore, I behave and think in a loving way to all people for I know that that which I give out returns to me multiplied. I only attract loving people in my world, for they are a mirror of what I am. I love myself. Therefore, I forgive and totally release the past and all past experiences, and I am free. I love myself. Therefore, I love totally in the now experiencing each moment as good and knowing that my future is bright and joyous and secure. For I am a beloved child of the universe and the universe lovingly takes care of me now and forevermore. And so it is. Makes me want to cry just reading that. My friends, this is the book that really helped me and I know it will help you as well. It is something that belongs 
in every highly sensitive person's library. And it is a treasure trove of learning to love and accept yourself for your own self-healing. I would love to hear about your experience with this book, if you've ever read it or if you're going to start reading it now. And I'd love for you to let me know. You can always email me, francis at francisfaden.com, and let me know about the books that you're reading. And if you have any good books to recommend for me, I would love that as well. So thank you once again, my friend. And remember, the key to magnifying your miracles is to always remember that your miracle is already here. God bless you, my friend. Bye-bye.